Welcome back. It has been quite a while since I made a video, and that's because I am currently in the process of both moving and getting a different job, so my life has been quite hectic. But uh, getting back to something hopefully a little bit interesting, um, multimeters and uh, a thermal imaging camera, but we'll get to that later. What uh, caused me to go down this road is, well, my two current meters. Uh, this is my main meter. This is the one I use usually out in the shop, not here at the bench, um, just because the stuff I'm doing here at the bench is more for fun. I don't need much accuracy, where the stuff I'm doing out in the shop usually requires me to be a little more certain of what I'm doing, so I use my uh, slightly better meter. But the cheapo meter, it died, and there's really no point in fixing this because they give these things away for free, or at least they used to. And the whole thing's worth about 50 cents, so... This is going in the bin. And the replacement is this. Now, again, my previous main meter was the Klein Tools MM300. This is the Klein Tools MM400. So this is the auto-ranging version with a few extra features as compared to this one. Um, I think I'm really going to like this one, and I'll show you some of the differences between these two. But at the same time, or actually a few days before, I got this, which is the Klein Tools thermal imaging camera. No, I'm not sponsored by Klein Tools. I do not have a particular preference towards Klein Tools, but I chose this one because I'm already familiar with this meter, and it is a really good meter for the price. These run, what, 20 to 30 bucks, depending on where you get them. These run about 40 to 50, depending on where you get them. And I think that's well worth the money. These, they do not give these things away. These are quite expensive. This was $300, which is a lot of money for how crappy of a camera it is, but it sees an infrared, not visible. So uh, we'll save the best for last. Um, let me tell you about this one real quick, though. So the MM400... also does temperature, which is something that this meter does not do. So looking at the dials here, you can see over here you have volts DC from 200 millivolts all the way up to 600 volts, and then over here you have your 200 and 600 volts AC. This is your diode check. And it gives a nice loud beep, which is excellent. And then you have microamps, milliamps, milliamps again, and then um, up to 10 amps. You have battery check, so for just a double A, like, you know, double A, triple A, up to like a D cell, one and a half volts, and then a nine volt. Kind of handy, but I've never used that function. I would just as well go over to uh, just the DC volts rather than going down here. And then you have ohms, and that's pretty much it. It's a very basic meter. This one over here. Now let me show you this feature. This is a backlit display, so it doesn't look like very much um, given the bright studio lighting I have here, but uh, it does make a big difference when, uh, when you don't have that. So this will do Celsius and Fahrenheit, pressing select changes which mode it's in. And then here are the prongs that will stick into here with thermal couple. I don't really need to show you that because we all know how thermal couples work. Microamps, milliamps, whole amps. I'm thinking that these are um, not auto-selected simply because it changes up the circuitry inside um, to give it more protection at the higher amperages. That's just a guess. You have volts, and then it automatically selects AC and you have to select DC. Here is both Hertz and then um, duty cycle. I'm not super clear about what duty cycle is in the context of this meter. I'm going to have to look into that. And then here is the continuity. I think it's slightly louder than the other one, but they're basically the same. And then you press select for ohms. 
And then you have capacitance and diode check, which is another feature this doesn't have, is this does not measure capacitance. So those are all the main functions of this. Um, again, you can uh, select min, max, and hold, and all that sort of stuff. It, there's a few extra features in here that make this a lot more like a professional meter um, as compared to this one. This one is more, you know, a hobbyist oriented, um, but you can do a lot with just a basic meter. So something else I wanna do is I wanna bring in the hoppy meter and I want to just see what the voltage is of what these say versus what this says for this readout here. I've always kind of wondered that. So let's go to volts. We should be reading pretty much zero volts. I'll stick that end in there, that end in there, and yeah, we're, we're there with it. We're within a couple tenths. And then let's see what the MM300 has to say. So this one reads a little low, that's interesting, but the batteries in this are original to when I got this meter several years ago, and as the battery voltage dies down a little bit, they start reading a little bit off, so the batteries in this are probably due for a change. And now for the fun part, the thermal imaging camera. So again, this is $300. I was going to originally go with a FLIR C2 or FLIR C3, but I decided against that because I would have to buy them used or spend a little bit of extra money to get them new. And the newer FLIR C series, you have to use the app. And I don't want to use the app because I don't want to get locked in. All right, so you can see how hot my hand is. And then you can see that there's pretty much nothing else in frame that's interesting to look at, except for my hand. And I guess you can see that this meter is a little warmer than the rest. That's a little bit cooler. Let's see if there's anything. I guess you can see where I touched it and that's about it. So the there's some basic functions in this. Um, on the top you have power and picture. So if I wanna take a picture of my hand here, then you press this button and it will save it. And then if you press the center button, you get to the menu. Here you can choose if you want Celsius or Fahrenheit. I'm in America, so obviously I'm gonna choose Fahrenheit. Here you can choose if you want the hot and cold dots on or off. This'll um, show you the, hot, the hottest and coldest spot in the image. Every few seconds, this thing has to calibrate and the screen freezes. It's a little annoying, but you get used to it. And a long press will take you back. So here you have three different options for um, which color grading you want. I prefer this one. Some people say that there is a specific reason why you would use one over the other based on what you're looking at. And that's probably true for my use because I'm um, really just using this more for fun and just you know, light duty diagnostics. As long as I can see what's hot and what's cold, that's all that matters to me. So I'm gonna choose that one. Here is looking through the photos. And then here are the settings. You can set up date, time. Um, emissivity, don't touch this if, unless you know what you're doing. This is to, um, so different materials emit infrared radiation at different rates. For example, like metal, um, especially like aluminum, is a mirror to infrared. Um, when you look at anything metallic with this, or even glass, you'll see a reflection. You won't see what, how hot the thing actually is. So you will change this emissivity setting based on what you're looking at. For most people, just leave it where it's at. Otherwise, you're going to start, you know, it's going to become less accurate 
or I should say, it's not going to show you what you want to see. Auto power off brightness, high low alerts, I know. Again, basic settings. This thing, I got it because it is simple as dirt. There's nothing fancy about it. It takes an SD card. It charges through uh, micro USB. There's no app. This thing is a basically just a brick. It, it'll last as long as the battery inside lasts because it's rechargeable. There's no replaceable batteries. Where the FLIR and all the other fancier ones where you have to use the app, yes, you do get a ton of extra functionality that I'm going to miss out on. Like you could take video and like the ones you can just plug into the bottom of your phone. They're fantastic. But what happens if that company goes out of business or what if that version of the software or hardware is no longer supported? Uh-oh, now you need to go and get a new piece of hardware because they canceled your software. This thing, I can just buy it and know it's going to be good for years. Um, I don't have to worry about the manufacturers meddling with stuff or like Apple or Google, um, you know, canceling the developer license on the company. Um, so that's why I chose this. Um, again, this is the, I didn't say it before, this is the TI-250. Neat little camera. Um, I'll show you some stills um, at, at some point that I've taken with this. Um, it comes with a nice carrying case, and that the reason why that's nice is because these are so expensive, these are 300 bucks. It's nice that it comes with a case so that it can stay protected because this is not really just a tool, it's an instrument. Um, where these aren't, you know, these you throw in your bag if they get a little scuffed up, oh well, like this one you can see. You know, it's dirty. It's been used. Um, oh, one more thing about this one, the new one. So when I got it, you know, because it actually just arrived today, and I've only had a few minutes to play around with it, um, I noticed when I picked it up and I did this, there was a rattle inside. Well, take a look at what I found. Yeah. A little piece of solder was was, you know jangling around in there. That's really not good, because what if that just happened to sit across um, a couple components, and you know, you have your leads in here, and you're measuring across something that's really high voltage, you know, up to like the 600 volt rating that this thing has. That has a very high potential to arc across and cause some damage. Very probably permanent damage to the meter. So, this is why I'm not uh, sponsored by nor endorsing Klein Tools, because that should never have been in there. Ever. Real quick, I'm going to uh, pop these two open, and just so you can see the inside in case you're curious. Um, they're nearly identical. So give me just a few seconds, and I'll meet you back here with, when these are open. All right, so let's take a look inside. We're gonna look at the 300 first. Something you'll notice is that these clamshells are incredibly well fit together. That is beautiful. They did an excellent job on these. Um, looking at this side first, the mold making on these is fantastic. Um, better than some hand tools that I've seen. It doesn't have any markings on it for what material it is. I'm gonna guess a TPU rubberized overmolding on ABS. I've been around plastics enough to kind of get an intuition for what they are. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm gonna just take a guess that this is ABS. Um, I don't really see a need for there to be, for it to be any better of a material than that. Than that. Here we have the circuit board. The main chip is on the other side of the board. Uh, but I'm not going to take this apart any further. There's really no need for that. So if you want to reverse engineer that just from the top, you go right on ahead. And then here is the 400. Which is equally well fit together. The inside is virtually identical. You could probably even 
um, exchange these two backs. They're probably exactly the same. And then the circuitry in here is a little bit different. You can see the main chip is on the back side of the board um, instead of the front side. And there are some really large surface mount resistor, sorry, diodes down here. Um, and some decent size resistors up here. I've never seen surface mount components quite that big before, so that's pretty cool to see. Looks like we have a crystal up here. I think that's a crystal. Um, I'm okay with electronics. I'm not. Uh, I'm not super good at understanding what all the stuff does. Like I know what a component does, but um, how the components work together, I'm still trying to learn that uh, day by day. So there you go. Virtually identical, but uh, slightly different boards on the back. Um, you can see some of the bigger traces go in different places. So I think uh, I think that'll be it for this video. There's not much else to talk about. Sorry, jump cut, small distraction. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about these meters, let me know. Um, I'll try and you know if I'll try and help you out if you've uh, if you've used one of these or if you're trying to find one. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting to use this one. This is going to be my new bench meter because, it, you know, um, I'm starting to get a little bit more into some higher level, um, more technical stuff on electronics. So I'd like to have a better meter. This one is more than good enough for the shop. I don't need anything other than, uh, than these functions out in the shop. So that stays outside. This is my new inside meter. And this is, for now, just more of a toy, but it'll, uh, it'll come in handy quite often, I think. So until next time, see ya.